just amazing hailstone here. Look at that. Everywhere. This is from Southern Australia. Earlier this year, a hailstone in the shape of a flower. Just look at the size of that thing. Look at this shocking snowfall. This is in Austria and also in parts of Japan where we see this insane amount of snowfall. We're talking between 13 and 20 feet tall in some of these locations. I mean, look at this. This is just amazing and bulldozing it away. Here we have a Swiss resort that was hit by an avalanche from snowfall. Shuffling snow out of the building. You can see this bus basically buried here. And uh, here's Germany. You can see obviously a little bit of snow, just a wee bit. Footage from day before yesterday of strange spiders hanging from the sky in Brazil. This phenomenon, actually, what they do is they go from one telephone pole to another, and they basically mask the sky with cobwebs. And these are giant spiders, by the way. If you can just imagine these raining down on you while you're walking around. Uh, a little bit of fun, as you can imagine. New tech in 2018 and 19 has gotten just a wee bit creepy. Things have sort of escalated in the last year. I think you may be shocked by a few of the things that have come out. So the artificial intelligence that Google is encouraging you to let your children use and talk with all day long, <laughs> that's what they're encouraging you to do, is going to reward them for treating the artificial intelligent with, with politeness. So if it doesn't, they don't say pretty please, I assume Google Assistant will scold them. And if it says, if you, the children say pretty please, the artificial intelligence controlled by Google will praise them for treating. Hmm, I think that may not work out too well for humanity if your children are basically serving AI robots. Lennar announced Wednesday that standard features in its new homes will include built-in Wi-Fi, all right, smart locks, uh, doorbells. Yeah, doorbells connected up to Amazon, yay. Thermostats and lights all controlled by Alexa, Amazon's voice activated digital assistant. <laughs> Do you enjoy being a computer? I don't have an opinion on that. Hey, Gabe. Do you enjoy being a human? Alexa, turn off. Alexa, turn off.
Alexa, turn off. So we should give away our privacy and our rights to an AI and to Amazon.com so they can control our heat in our house. And of course, record everything we're saying and doing. It's not as if Amazon Alexa already hasn't shown itself to be a little bit creepy, playing music in the middle of the night, laughing in a very creepy manner, or doing other strange things. And of course, that's just a little glitch, folks. That's not going to happen to your heat. There isn't going to be any weird things happening in your home as a result of this stuff. Are we selling our digital soul to this big corporation, to these overlords of Silicon Valley? Because it seems like it to me. For decades, facial recognition has been the stuff of science fiction. Well, for many here in China, it's already becoming a part of daily life. Thanks to huge advances in artificial intelligence, people here can use their faces to log into mobile apps, access office buildings, and take money out of ATMs. Police are also using the technology to shame jaywalkers and to scan crowds for persons of interest. Welcome to your surreal future, folks where cameras monitor your every move, AI software is watching you and trying to figure out what you're gonna do next. And just in case you may step out of line, your overlords maybe don't like something you're doing, they'll probably stop you before you're even gonna get to the chance to do it with their pre-crime division and other things like that. No, don't worry about it. You still have privacy in your mind or do you? Because that's another thing that's coming up the pike. They want to connect your brain to the internet. So maybe you don't have privacy, period, at that point. Maybe it's sort of a full control mechanism. As long as you're a good little boy, there's no problems. Just that you have to ask yourself, what is a good little boy in the future? <laughs> well, that might be not a question you want to ask. Now, how could this go wrong, folks? I mean, all they're trying to do is protect us, right? They'll put up all those cameras and facial recognition to stop the bad guys. <laughs> well, I guess it depends on your definition of a bad guy, right? And of course, you also have to ask yourself, hmm, maybe they're going to also shut off your credit card and maybe your heat in your house and any and every other thing that they could do. Stop you from moving around, using a social credit system like they do in China already. If you're a bad boy, you can't ride on a train. If you're a bad boy, you can't use your credit card anymore. And of course, by then, cash won't exist. So you're pretty much going to have to grow things in your backyard if you even have access to that. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred, three score, and six. People will be forced to take the mark of the beast. So many Christians will take the mark of the beast. Because many of them are thinking that it's harmless. Secondly, many are going to think that my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak and God will understand. Mm. Sadly, God will not understand. Because we have been warned not to take the mark of the beast. For He's, the word reason. is clear, we can't yes. take it. Right. Unless we want to go to hell. Not only he says not to take the mark, he also says all those who take the mark will be doomed forever. And no mercy will be shown, no oh. more grace for them. But he's, it, he is, it, is, it is so clear that the Bible says we cannot eat, 
I don't, I don't know if drink is in there too. I think it's drink. Mm-hmm. You, you can't, they won't give you any food. Literally, when trouble comes, the government's already planned it. They're going to take the food, as they do always, from the rich and give to the poor or for people who have food and then distribute it around until everybody's starving to death. The MP bomb, which we have the man who's ahead of the commission, was here on our last shows, Peter Pratt. And he's just telling us that this is a, 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 the most serious calamity facing America. If the EMP, which Korea has, goes off tomorrow over our country, immediately all cars stop, all trucks stop, all food stops, all water stops, every pump stops running, every car stops running. And in one year, 90% of America will be dead, according to the experts. You know, this this guy actually makes a lot of sense here. What he says makes perfect sense. We should be prepared and realizing that this is coming down the pike and that we need to be aware of what's going to happen in the near future. In the not-so-distant future, we're talking about full control. And, of course, conveniently, I think it makes a lot of sense that the devil would take advantage of this cause the tribulation, try to force everybody to follow his agenda. And if you don't, you're going to be shut off from everything. They're going to take your life. As you can tell, it's not going to be a pretty situation. So this is really what's going to happen. This isn't going to be where we're going to just get raptured out of here before all the things go bad. I really don't believe that's the case. Why else would the, why else would the devil have to force people to do stuff? Why would he have to to go against them if they're already in compliance or if they don't have much will obviously there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be trying to resist this and it's going to go bad so you should be prepared obviously i think that would be a wise idea now what is the only real way to escape what is coming in the future the near future i would have to say it's being spiritually prepared now of course A lot of people consider the idea of just how can I remain free? How can I escape from all the stuff that's coming down the pipe on a physical level? You know, where they're just like, you know, free, maybe living in 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 a community or something or living out in the woods or whatever. But in reality, you need to be spiritually prepared. That's the most important thing. And to say that, it means to have faith in Christ. This is what we're talking about. We're seeing literally what Revelation says coming to pass in front of our eyes. Clearly, this is a a, a solid evidence that it's telling the truth. So having real faith, living faith in Christ is the answer, repenting your sins and coming to Christ. And this is how one becomes a Christian, having faith in his death on the cross as payment for your sin. All right. And of course, obviously, we want to be able to live through this as well. And about the only way to do that would be to be prepared for it. What's coming down the pike, knowing good ways that you can protect yourself and your family, things of that.